Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault and once again I'm coming to you with another range report and today's range report is on a firearm that is kind of rare and very collectible in some circles. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kunin Arms Model A 357 Magnum and essentially this is a 1911 style firearm designed to shoot 357, a revolver cartridge. And there are a few mechanical differences between this particular gun and a 1911. But in general, if you're familiar with how 1911s operate and the manual of arms of 1911s, this gun will seem very familiar to you. But there are definitely some differences and we will go over those. Now, Kunin Arms is a company that is no longer in business and it was founded by a man named Dan Kunin. And they were one of these companies quite a few years ago that thought it it was a great idea to shove non-semi-automatic cartridges into a semi-automatic firearm to see if they could get them to work. And by many accounts, Kunin Arms was successful. I mean, who doesn't love the power and the ballistics of 357 Magnum? Arguably the best revolver cartridge out there. Well, shove that into a time-tested design like the 1911 and you might have a winner. However, we all know that 357 is a rimmed cartridge. It's not designed to be fed from a magazine. So how are they going to get that to work reliably? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So this is gonna be a really cool range report on a mechanically very interesting gun. But before we get into the range report proper and all the things I like and don't like about this gun, as always, I want to thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this really cool and collectible pistol. His name is Jack. He's a local fan and subscriber. In fact, he's the second person named Jack that lends guns to the channel, so I affectionately call him Jack number two. So thank you, Jack. I always want to thank my Patreon supporters because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on around here and I couldn't do it without them. And if you guys want to see all these videos early, you can join my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And there is a link in the description below. And as always, I want to thank my primary sponsor who always provides all of the ammunition for these range reports and thus makes them financially feasible for me, my good friend Mark from Brownworks. And if you're here to watch a review on a Kunin Arms 1911 chambered and 357 Magnum, I have no doubt that you have a love affair with 1911s, as do many other people that watch the Texas Gun Vault. And at some point in your 1911 collecting journey, you've been thinking, man, it would be pretty sweet to have a set of custom and unique grips to make my gun one of a kind. Well, I have the perfect grip company for you. Brownworks. Brownworks is a custom grip company making a wide variety of grips for a wide variety of firearms out of a wide variety of exotic woods and materials. In fact, the 1911 is one of Mark's specialties. You guys can go over to his website and see all the custom 1911 grips that he can make. He can make these grips out of laminate woods. He can finish them in a wide variety of colors. He can even put on custom logos, custom engravings, and custom textures, as well as apply unique things like snake skin and alligator skin to your grips to make them one of a kind. Every set of grips that Mark makes is one of a kind and unique. So I'm going to ask you guys to go over and check out his website and I'm going to put a link to that website in the comments section below as well as a coupon code for 10% off your first order. So please go over to his website and when you make that first order for your grips please tell Mark the Texas Gun Vault sent you. All right, so once more, let's talk about the cool, rare, and collectible firearm that we will be shooting and reviewing today. The Kunin Arms Model A 357 Magnum. This has a 5-inch barrel, so it's the same length as a traditional government model 1911. This gun obviously is in stainless steel. And what makes it even more unique is this gun has a very low serial number. It is in the very low 100s. So this really is one one of the early production ones. And a lot of times when it comes to collectible guns, the lower the serial number, the better. And so it's really early in that run. And this is just a really interesting and cool gun that everyone seems to talk about because as I mentioned in the opening, who doesn't want to have a 1911 chambered and 357 Magnum? Now, honestly, 
I've never asked myself that question, but I understand the appeal of it. But let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this gun. And first and foremost, it's a 1911. Of course, that is a time-tested design. Now, putting a 357 in this, is it gonna work as reliably? I have no idea. But many people know this is John Browning's masterpiece. It's a design that, as of recording this video, is over 113 years old. That's quite a testament. So I'm pretty sure this gun is going to function and work well because it is a 1911. But obviously we gotta talk about the concept of this gun. And I like the concept of this gun because one of the things that I do complain about, even with guns like 1911s, is that they kind of become stagnant. It's a 113 year old design. So you gotta do something new with it. You just can't keep producing the same gun for decade after decade and eventually centuries after centuries. Things have to progress. And the idea of saying, hey, we can do something Something a little bit different. Let's change the mechanics of this so we can use other cartridges in this that might be more advantageous for some circumstances, I think is a great idea. Kunin Arms was thinking outside the box and I really applaud their efforts for that. I've already mentioned too that this gun is in stainless steel. I absolutely love stainless steel guns, especially specialty and collectible guns. It just has that right look. And when you take these to the range, stainless steel is just so easy to clean. It has the right look. It is just a great material to make firearms out of, and I wish more companies would do it to this day. After all, blued steel can rust over time. I guess stainless can as well, but it's less susceptible to do so. It's just a great and durable material, especially for semi-automatic handguns. And like many other 1911s of the era, this has extended controls, and I do like that. So we have an extended slide stop, and we have an extended safety, and I'm a big fan of those. They're not too big, they're not too intrusive, you won't have any problems finding a holster that would fit these. But I do like the extensions. I think it makes a gun, especially one that has a larger grip, so much easier to use. But now let's talk about a few things about this gun that I don't like. And the first thing I don't like about this gun that really sticks out to me is something that deals with the aesthetics. And that is the fact this is a slab side gun. And what I mean by that is unlike your traditional 1911s and government profile 1911s, the frame comes all the way out to the end of the slide. We don't have any of the scallops you're used to seeing here. And for me, this makes this gun look exceptionally blocky. And I do not like that at all. I think it takes the sexy curves and lines of a 1911 and just turns this into a big block of metal. Does it affect the function? No, but I am just not a big fan of this. I think the only way I could ever deal with this is if you had a bunch of great engraving on it or with some type of presentation gun, but even then I am not going to be a fan of this. I'm also not a fan of these grips. As you can see, it has absolutely zero stippling or texture on them. They're just flat. They're kind of boring. And my biggest concern is chambering a gun in 357 Magnum. We're probably gonna have a lot of recoil. And if you have very smooth grips like this, is this gun going to slip in my hand? And another thing, and I don't know if there's anything anybody could do about this, but the length of pull of this gun is very long because 357 Magnum is such a long cartridge. So from the back strap to the front strap and to the face of the trigger, this is a very, very long distance. And if you have smaller hands, Hands, you're probably not going to like this and even with my larger hands I have a problem getting my hands all the way around this grip so I don't know if that's going to affect how this gun shoots but we're gonna find out when we get to the range but now there's one thing about this gun that I want to talk about that I'm kind of neutral on and that is the trigger and this is where this gun deviates from a traditional 1911 in some aspects because on a typical 1911 you have a trigger mechanism that goes straight back into the grip and this allows very nice pulls very crisp breaks however this trigger is kind of on a hinge up here at the top as you can see but it also has that lever which goes to the back 
of the gun. So I don't know why this is designed a little bit different and it looks like the trigger shoe or the trigger face is not connected to that bar at all. It just rubs up against it. So I'm not really sure why they deviated from the traditional 1911 design. I don't understand why they would need to do that. But I am kind of neutral on this trigger because I did have some problems when I first got it into the Texas Gun Vault for review. Whoever owned this pistol before Jack did put a bunch of grease in this and I virtually had to detail strip this gun to get all of that grease out. And still the trigger is kind of heavy and lethargic. But I want to adjust the camera, I want to get out the Lyman trigger pull weight gauge and I want to show you what this trigger is all about. So let me go ahead and do that now. So let's take a look at the trigger in this Kunin Arms 357 Magnum Automatic Model A. And I know some people are going to ask, why do I call it the Model A? Well, it's because on the side of the box from Kunin Arms, they call it the Model A. I have never heard this gun referred to by that nomenclature, but obviously this is the proper model name for it, as designated by the manufacturer and the maker. So let's go ahead and look at the controls of this gun real fast. Here's your slide stop, thumb safety, and grip safety, all in the traditional places. And the function of the thumb safety is just like a traditional 1911. It can only be actuated when the hammer is back. Here is the trigger. As you can see, it is that two-piece trigger I was talking about. And I can move the trigger shoe or the trigger face, and it doesn't move that trigger bar at all. And it does look like it is hinged a little bit. But before I dry fire this, let me go ahead and, of course, drop the magazine, ensure there is no ammunition in it. And, of course, safety check the firearm and make sure there is nothing in the chamber. It looks like we are good. So now let me show you this trigger pull here pretty short take up. We hit a wall. It feels like it's kind of stiff, kind of hard. And then the reset, very short, tactile, and audible. I do like that a lot, but that's pretty standard with most 1911 style firearms. But why they changed the design here, I do not know. So let me go ahead and get out the Lyman trigger pull weight gauge, and we're going to find out how heavy this trigger actually is. I'll go ahead and clear the averages. And this can be a little bit tricky because I have to have the grip safety depressed when I do this. So let's get the first pull. Six pounds, 7.1 ounces. Six pounds, 9.0 ounces. Six pounds, 11.9 ounces. Six pounds, 2.1 ounces. And finally, we have six pounds, 8.6 .6 ounces, which gives us an average of six pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. So definitely a much heavier trigger than you would get in a standard 1911. And 1911 triggers, usually you can get a very nice trigger pull with, but this one, definitely a little bit on the heavier side. So that's what this trigger is all about in this Kunin Arms 357 Magnum. All right, so it's time to take this thing to the range. And as always, I'm gonna start off at seven yards and I'm gonna put two magazines through this. I should tell you, I only have one magazine for this range report, so I will have to cut as I reload it and then I'll shoot the second magazine and show you the results on the target. So let's go to the range and see what this gun is all about and how well it shoots.
And I know that looks like that was a successful first two magazines through this firearm. However, I have discovered three gigantic glaring problems with it. The first problem is something I was kind of wondering why it was changed from an original 1911 design, and that is the tang on the grip safety. Some people call it a beaver tail. But right here, this is a really short, almost non-existent tang. And so when I have my grip high on the firearm, which is the typical modern technique, you will notice that when this hammer comes back, yeah, it's probably going to give me hammer bite. In fact, this gun gave me some hammer bite. And I want to show you that now. And as you can see, we are already off to a bad start. If you got bigger, fleshier hands like I do, this gun is going to be a little bit uncomfortable to shoot. This gun has those extended controls like I was mentioning. And most of the time when you have a custom 1911 like this and you have those extended controls, the manufacturers will also add an extended tang or beaver tail. And why they decided to omit that with this gun, I don't know why. This tang is even shorter than a typical standard mil spec one from World War II. Why it's so short, I don't know. And as I mentioned, if you like to ride these pistols kind of high, you're going to have a problem with hammer bite. The second thing about this gun that I noticed is that it shoots really, really low. Now, you might not have noticed it on the target, but the first rounds that I shot through this were about a foot below the center of the target where I was aiming. Now, I know some people out there are going to type frantically in the comments and be like, you need to go get more training. You're a terrible shot. But I shoot enough guns here at the Texas Gun Vault that in general at seven yards, I know what I'm doing. So the second magazine, I was aiming a lot higher than the center of the target and it was still exceptionally low. The grouping was okay for each one of the magazines but I was having to walk that point of impact higher and higher and I'm having to hold really high. And let me go ahead and show you the sights on this gun. We have a typical blade here in the front. It is kind of short and we have some nice sights in the back but these are not adjustable so I don't know what can be done about that now the one thing that you did not see on camera because I was having to load the magazine is an issue with the magazine I have never seen any magazine that is this hard to load now I mentioned in the beginning part of this video that they're trying to take a design a 1911 that's a semi-automatic handgun designed for rimless ammunition and put a rimmed cartridge in it and the magazine design is going to be crucial for this gun to function right those rounds are going to stack oddly but in order for them to fit in this magazine I had a really really tough time so once again I want to adjust the camera and I want to show you how hard this magazine is to load and a tool that they provide you because apparently they knew it was difficult to load. So for this part of the range report I'm going to have to make an exception to a general rule I have when I'm filming. I almost never have live ammunition out here when I'm doing these range reports but because I have to show you how this magazine loads I do have to get them out and I don't have 357 Magnum snap caps. So here we have the magazine and I'm going to go ahead and load this first round. It's going to go in just fine and easy. The second round a little bit tougher, but you can tell that spring is very, very strong. Third round, a little bit more problem. Fourth round, now we're starting to get where it's not wanting to go. And so if I push hard enough, I might be able to get it, but I can't. So I know some people are going to say, why don't you use an Uplula magazine loader? Well, there is a reason why. The 357 Magnum cartridge is too long, and as you can see, the magazine loader is too small, and so you can't use this. But luckily, Kunin Arms thought of a way to help, and they provide this little tool in the box. At first, I thought this was an Allen wrench, maybe to adjust the sights, but it's rounded it doesn't have any flat surfaces to it and then i realized on the follower there is this little hole and that is what this tool is supposed to go through so you can pull down that follower but now you see another issue we have because of the rim of the cartridge they get stuck here at the top 
and you have to constantly be pushing those down. So you have to use this tool, push the follower down, and hopefully the rounds won't get in there in an odd angle like that one. And you're constantly having to fight it for those rounds to go in. And so if I pull that down and shove the rounds in, I can get it to go. And this thing will only hold seven rounds. And I'm currently having still problems with it. As you can see, that is still getting stuck. So you kind of have to finagle it around a little bit. And then eventually you can get that seventh round in there. But if you don't have this tool, this magazine is virtually impossible to load. And I think this is the Achilles heel of this gun. This makes shooting this gun so unenjoyable. So you need to have a tool or maybe some type of Allen wrench that can fit through that follower so you can load this magazine. And that is the third big thing about this gun that is a huge issue. All right, so now you know this, let's go back to the range and hopefully knowing this gun shoots low, I'll be able to shoot it better. So let's double the distance on this target, put two more magazines through it and see how I do. And you probably notice I had to discontinue this test early and I didn't even show you the target because at this distance at around 15 yards, it's shooting so low, it's unacceptable. And I know there's something wrong with this gun. You'll even notice in the range footage that it looks like I'm shooting the gun relatively high because I was, I was trying to shoot above the center of the target and these rounds were still impacting a foot below the center. So if I'm going out to further distances and trying to be accurate with this gun, it's just not going to work. Why this gun is shooting so low, I do not know. It could be the sights, it could be the barrel. There's just something about it that is completely off. So I just knew at that point it wasn't worth continuing the test. But I want to see if I can figure out what the problem is. So I'm going to bring the target back in about 10 to 7 yards and I'm going to shoot from a barrier or bench. Maybe it is me anticipating these shots because after all I am getting a little bit of hammer bite so I might be pushing the gun down. That is a possibility, but hopefully if I'm shooting it from a bench or a barrier, this would minimize that. And I'll also get more data on how this gun is shooting in relation to where the sights are and where the impacts are. So let me put two more magazines through this, shooting it at a relatively close distance from a bench, and let's see where this gun impacts.
So obviously we have some issues when it comes to the accuracy with this firearm. Is it the sights? Is it the barrel? Is it something else internally with this gun? I can't say for certain. The grouping is actually pretty good, but it's so low that in my opinion it's unusable. I know that if I set out the target at 20 or 25 yards, I'd virtually have to be aiming for the ceiling hoping some of these rounds were going to impact the target. So I'm probably going to discontinue the range report at this time because I can't get any good data when it comes to how this gun shoots. But let's talk about the functionality of this gun. I'm actually really impressed that it works so well. I haven't had any failures to feed, failures to extract, or failures to eject. And the recoil of this gun is actually really light. I would say it's about that of a 45, even though we get a large flash and a large report with this. So I think if this gun was more accurate for me or the sights were on, this thing would be quite a fascinating firearm. But for some reason, it is shooting so low, I just don't think I can get much usable data continuing to shoot this. But there is one more test I do want to do, and I'm going to bring in the target quite close, and I want to see how fast I can shoot this gun. I did say this trigger is a little bit on the heavier side, so before I finish shooting at the range, I wanted to do this last test. So I'm going to load up one more magazine, and I just want to see how fast I can shoot this, and with the accuracy problems, can I even get any of these rounds on target. So let's see if I can do it. And the way this gun is performing, it is completely unusable. It's not practical at all. The gun is impacting the target so low. I'm having to hold the gun so low because I'm scared I'm going to get hammer bite. This tang is simply too short. That makes the bore axis higher. I'm getting more muzzle flip when I'm shooting it fast. And this trigger is heavy for a 1911 style trigger. This is just not performing well. The functionality is great, but the performance of the gun is not good at all. So what are my final thoughts on this really cool and collectible Kunin Arms 357 Magnum Automatic Model A? Well, it is a cool concept. I understand why people desire it. And if you're a 1911 fan, you may want one. But in my opinion, this is simply just a gimmick. Yes, it works. But man, is it too hard to load the mags, and this gun is unusable in the accuracy department. Now, could it be just this example? I don't know. When it comes to the magazines, because they supply this tool, it's probably with every single one of them. But with the accuracy, I simply don't no. And so this was kind of a disappointing range report. But normally when I have to discontinue a range report, it's because the gun isn't functioning well. This gun functions great. It's just so inaccurate, it's unusable. So on my star system, how would I rate the Kunin Arms Model A 357 Magnum Automatic? Well, because the magazines are so hard to load and the gun shoots so low, I can only give it two out of five stars. Yeah, kind of a disappointing review. Now that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a cool, rare, and collectible gun. And I know there's many people out there that would love to have it in their collection. However, if you're gonna buy it as a practical gun or a range gun, I don't think you're gonna like it very much. So I have to say my experience with this is kind of unexpected. I really thought I was going to have function problems with it. I mean, they're taking a 357 Magnum and putting it into a 1911, but they got it to run and run well. But why is it so inherently inaccurate? I just don't know. And why do they have the design choice of this really short tang? I don't know either. But I'm curious if any of you guys own one of these Kunins or have ever shot one, and do your experiences mirror mine? I would love to know in the comments section below and find out, are they all the same? So please tell me. So, as always, Thanks for watching.